What is up, friend and fellow anti-netter? Scott Shepard here at 11.32 a.m. on a Friday. And I am just about to get to the office, and I'll be honest with you. I am in not good shape. My freaking neck is tweaked so hard because for the past week, I've been staring down at my yellow legal pad, the first draft you know, of issue number five of the Scott Shepard letter, which is by the time you hear this, you know, I will have been on to another issue of the Scott Shepard letter, but my freaking neck is tweaked to the max. And it's been like tweaked all week. I cannot like turn my head left or right because I'm like staring up at my monitor and then staring down at this horrible angle for like freaking four hours plus every single freaking day this week. i barely could sleep last night I had to pop a freaking Ambien literally like take an Ambien because I kept waking up and I was like 2 30 a.m and the only way I could like not wait like stop waking up was to freaking pop a sleeping pill an Ambien and I'm not sure what the legal repercussions are of uh, me you know advising a uh, a use of a sleeping pill for you know, sleeping, um, on a podcast, but whatever. And I'm exhausted and I'm freaking tired because, you know, every month I spend two weeks, you know, one week writing out an issue of the Scott Shepard letter by hand. And then the next week typing it up and writing it up and make no bones about it. Issue number five of the Scott Shepard letter is a freaking killer. Like there's like easily, if you apply the material in that one, It is like $5,000 worth of value if you live it. It is a framework you should, you will have really and follow for years, decades, even. God, I'm like literally looking right right now in order to turn left. I have to like turn my whole freaking body and I want to like, God, it's just freaking sucks. Anyways, like if you think writing is like a docile lifestyle, no, it like takes the fucking soul and like mental energy and physical energy even like out of you and i'm like today i have finally printed out the first draft now it's red pen friday i'm gonna be going through it with a red pen and editing my you know really final manuscript all right come on lady let's go freaking a and you too dirt bag okay sorry there's just some guy that's just meandering across the road and I'm not in a good mood and you know this person was just taking his sweet old time all right anyway you can get a you can get a taste of the mood that I'm in I'm freaking just annoyed and pissed and one of the reasons I'm pissed is because you know I cannot progress and get towards my goals if I'm spending two freaking hardcore weeks literally five days a week Every, every day for two weeks writing out and producing an issue of the Scott Shepard letter. I, it's dawned on me that I need to become way more efficient and I need to get it done in you know one week a month instead of it eating up two freaking entire whole weeks each month. So um, one of the things that I'm going to be shifting towards and doing is, you know, 24 pages of a packed issue of teaching like which is what issue number five is 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 great yes for those that you know have the time to ingest all that information but if i'm going to be hitting people with 24 pages or even 20 pages of hard packed content every single month people are just going to get like inundated it's going to feel like homework piling up and stacking up and i can see this myself because my own father is a subscriber of the Scott Shepard letter. And I don't even think, you know, he's even finished issue number three yet. And here we are at issue number five and issue number three was a short one. And, you know, it leads me to think like Gary Halbert's letters were eight pages and sometimes, you know, maximum there were 12 pages. And here I am, I'm freaking doing like three times the size of his issues on a monthly basis. And 
I don't think it's good for me, and it's also not good for my subscribers. My people need smaller digestible chunks of information, right? And I love my subscribers. I love my people. I love my anti-netters. So I've done a poll. I've I've gone done a poll in my membership, uh, private membership portal, my private members community, and everyone, of course, said or a lot of people said, "Oh, I, I more the better, more the better. We love it, Scott." Um, but you know, that's because my people are freaking awesome. But in reality, it's like I know that hey, I think sixteen pages uh, would be probably a better, healthier fit and thing for my audience and also for me. Because where I want to go is I want to be able to uh, work on my business, not in my business. And when I'm just writing and writing uh, emails, writing my physical monthly newsletter two weeks, you know, every single month, and then do customer support, I'm doing everything. And I liked it at first, but I'm getting to the point where, man, like this shit sucks. I need to get into my zone of genius and just focus on my zone of genius. My zone of genius is really three things. I am great at, you know, getting out there and getting my message out there, getting the anti-netter message out there. I also am great at, and I love, even though it's hard as hell, like I'm bitching about right now, but writing the physical monthly newsletter, that is where the gold comes from. That's where I'm able to develop my ideas. Just like I talked about in the Antinet Zettelkasten book of developing ideas, you develop your thinking through writing. And even though it's not the easiest thing in the world, like I would, I want the hard work. I want the hard thing. And what I just need to do is I need to tweak it. I can't freaking write out 24 page, you know, like 6,000 words every single month and expect to get anywhere. Um, because I want to lead by example and I want to build a movement and I want to advertise and market. And that's also my zone of genius. My zone of genius is selling the living hell out of a movement, getting out there, communicating our message, communicating the anti netter message, marketing it, um, creating ad creatives and getting our message out there. And I need to get back into that. I can't be doing the customer support all the time and all of that. So I'm on a mission to, and you'll be, you'll be seeing this come to fruition by the time that this podcast is published. And I'm on a mission to really delegating and offloading every single area of my, uh, zone, uh, my non zone of genius items so that I can really grow this movement. And so that's where I'm at today. So I'm going to be going in on this Friday. I'm tired. I still feel like the freaking half-life after effects of this freaking sleeping pill because I couldn't sleep because my neck is tweaked and writing. And like that is what it feels like, quite honestly, <laughs> to be on the tail end when you're doing a two, two-week sprint of writing. That's what it feels like. I'm like, this is my last day. And <laughs> I had the same feeling last month. I'm like, what the hell? Like this, this writing, even one thing a month is hard. And I realized that's, that's counter going to be counterintuitive to my whole pitch and my whole message of the dream writer's lifestyle and the dream intellectual lifestyle. But I also, you know, the fact of the matter is I don't, you know, I don't make it, Hey, Oh yeah, you're, you can be lazy and don't have to do anything. And you can like outsource it to chat GPT. No bull crap. That's never part of my message. Look, if you want a hard life, then spend it trying to avoid hard things. And so writing one thing a month is hard. Yes. What I'm saying is you can and ought to and should once you've done a few of them in a row and you, you need to get better and you need to get it down so that it's not like taking up half of your month. It needs to take, you know, maybe, maybe three to four working days per month. And, you know, that's my story and I'm sticking with it basically. Um, so 
essentially that's what I wanted to share. That's the realities of running one of these dream independent intellectual writing businesses, you know, where you can be a knowledgepreneur, solopreneur is there's these growth pains and these transitions where you're like, God, like I am literally like this sucks and I need to offload all of the small, small, small five minute things like me, me, like going and just, I have to log in to three different, you know, platforms to cancel someone's membership. It takes like three minutes, but sitting down to process all the emails and doing that, like they're, they're these small paper cuts that essentially end up snowballing and crowding out your time, your zone of genius. And so that is what I've come to realize. Like you need to offload literally every single thing that is not within your zone of genius. And that is my goal. My goal is to uh, create a movement and to work on my physical monthly newsletter, but don't have it take up two weeks every month. So anyway, that's a, uh, it's a little behind the scenes that I wanted to share with you and uh, hope you enjoyed it. hope you enjoyed this rambling piece of wisdom while I still have, you know, a half-life of freaking Ambien pulsing through my mind and my neck is still tweaked. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to go into my office. I'm going to do what I always do. The most important thing is I'm going to start by reading and doing my analog knowledge dev, my AKD for, you know, maybe 30 minutes, an hour, you know, get my bib cards, get my mind growing that's the most important thing. And then I'm going, then, then it's red pen mode, red, red pen Fridays. And, uh, you learned, you learned what I'm talking about in regards to the red pen in, uh, issue number four of the Scott Shepard letter. So, uh, hope this gives you a little bit more of a glimpse into reality of running a analog knowledge business. And it's all about tweaking, growing, continuing to get more and more focused, uh, on your zone of genius. Anyway, peace and love and stay crispy, my friend.